Good Friday morning, friends. I hope that you're having a great Friday morning. Looking forward to a fantastic weekend uh, this weekend, and uh, especially on Sunday. Come and join us this Sunday for our worship services at 8 and 10.30 a.m. at First Baptist Church, Dadeville. Uh, join us for Bible study at 9.15. We've got classes for all age groups. We've got great teachers and workers in our uh, church. So just come and be a part of our services and activities. And if you can't be here, watch online. Just go to our Facebook page, go to our uh, website and or our YouTube channel, and you can find the services broadcast live. Uh, not Sunday school, but the worship services. So I hope to see you here or see you online. But if you have your Bibles this morning, turn with me to Philippians chapter 1. We're continuing from yesterday where the Apostle Paul was talking about how our conduct has to be worthy of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now that's a big statement. When you think about what the gospel is, how Jesus died for us, was buried and, and rose again, and what conduct needs to match that. But this bold conduct to go out and share the hope that's within us. The fact that he was willing to suffer for us means that we should be willing to suffer for him and to tell those around us about Jesus. And then he talks about how we must stand fast in one spirit, that unity, working together, striving for the gospel to make sure that the whole world gets to hear this. But then the second part of this, picking up in verse 28, is related and it really does make a difference in, in our lives if we'll listen to this. He says, and not in any way terrified by your adversaries. Listen, we don't have adversaries. Let's just be honest. We've got people who might make fun of us, people who might ridicule us, people who might uh, blacklist us, not want to be around us. But we really don't have adversaries as believers. Nobody is attacking the church. Nobody's threatening to put us in jail, those kinds of things. But even so, Paul says, don't be terrified by your adversaries. Because God doesn't give us a spirit of fear. God gives us that spirit of courage and of a sound mind and boldness to do what he's called us to do. We shouldn't let the enemy affect us in such a way that we hold back because we're afraid of what people are going to say or what people are going to do. Look what he says. He says, that to them is a proof of perdition, but to you of salvation. He's not talking about being terrified. He's talking about not being terrified. When you can stand up to your enemy, stand up to the bully, stand up to those who speak against you, stand up to those who make fun of you, they recognize that it is the power of the gospel working in you. It's kind of like I shared with my men's Bible study yesterday. The Apostle Paul was constantly being criticized for being in the ministry for the money, that it was all about his own personal gain, that it was all about prestige and, and making other people take care of him. Listen, Paul went from Philippi to Thessalonica. He was beaten, uh, put in stocks, put in prison in, in Philippi for preaching the gospel, and then immediately when he's released, he goes into Thessalonica to do the same thing, facing the same kind of opposition. Listen, you don't do that if you're in it for the money. You don't keep doing it, but when you do have that boldness and continue with that persistent ministry and share the gospel in spite of the consequences, people take notice, not of you, but of the power of God working in you. And the power of God working in you and through you is what's going to change the world around you. You can't do it yourself. It is the gospel that does it. It's the work of the Holy Spirit that does it. And he tells us that. He says that that gift of, of boldness is from God. Now look at what he says in verse 29. For to you it has been granted on behalf of Christ, not only to believe in him, but also to suffer for his sake. Remember the beatitude? Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake. There's a blessing that's promised. There's a joy that comes when we find ourselves counted worthy to suffer for the cause of Christ. And Paul says it in verse 30, having the same conflict which you saw in me and now here is in me. We need to follow Paul's example. We need to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. We need to be strong and bold and recognize that the calling that God has placed on us, the invitation that Jesus gave us to enter into this relationship with him is a calling to suffering. Jesus said, they're going to hate you. They're going to persecute you. They're going to revile you. 
But when they do, rejoice, because it is evidence of your salvation, and it demonstrates the power of God in your life. Have a great weekend this weekend. Come and join us on Sunday. I can't think of a more important sermon that that I could preach than what's coming this Sunday. Pray for those who will listen. Pray for those who will watch online. Pray for me as I proclaim the message because I can't do it by myself. It has to be God proclaiming it through me. So lift me up to the Lord that I would say only what he would have me to say. And let's see what God does in response. Love you guys. I'll see you here Monday.